You want to say hello? Hi. This is Felix. Hello. You're so cute. Hi. Buddy. Ah, he's not gonna stay still but hey it's been a while um, for those of you who have not been to my channel before my name is Lisa and you're watching the stop jump in it podcast I have no idea what episode number this is actually all I know is it has been about six weeks since I have last recorded a video um, yeah so the last time I recorded a video um, my cat, Samson, who many of you have come to know and love, especially through my Vlogmas videos, um, as I was editing that video that week, he actually passed away. So that was the last, um, that was the last time I was showing Samson on the podcast. So that was the end of March. And I took a break from recording because Sam was my best buddy. He was going to be 17 years old this summer but um he's actually he lived a really long and happy life and i miss him i miss him so much but we're not gonna do sad anything today um but i just wanted to let you all know that samson has unfortunately left the stop drop and knit family but we have a new member of the family now and He's hopped away from me, so we will bring him back on a little bit later, probably in the acquisitions section, <laughs> because he is my main acquisition. Um, so yeah, so lots of exciting things happening here. It has been, it has been so many weeks since I've recorded. This is the the time of the semester at my college where work is very, 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 very busy. And instead of going into the office one day a week, I've been in there like four or five days a week and weekends have been busy. And you guys all know, it's just, it's just that time of the year. So, um, and honestly, like once Sam departed uh, Earth here, I was really bummed for, you know, several weeks. I mean, I was, I was depressed. I, struggle with my mental health like I'm sure a lot of a lot of you probably do as well and he was really really important for my emotional well-being so so losing him was really especially hard on me and I just I just needed to take some time away from the podcast I wasn't in the mood to record and if I'm not in the mood to record it's not going to be a fun video to watch so there was just no reason to come back here and record before I was ready. I wasn't knitting very much, actually. I just I just kind of retreated for, for several weeks. And, you know, as I said, work was really busy. So, I mean, it's not like I was doing nothing. I was, I was busy with other things. I had a faculty recital, so I was rehearsing and performing. And, you know, it's just been really, really busy at the college. But I just, I wasn't I wasn't throwing myself into my knitting for several weeks and if I'm not knitting I'm I'm not feeling like talking about knitting but the good news is is that I have finally started knitting once again so I wanted to I mean obviously it's been a good month and a half so I have a lot to update you on not necessarily a whole lot of knitting progress to show you but I have picked up a few different different projects. So I will kind of like let you know where I am with those projects, what my plans are for whether I'm going to continue knitting on them immediately or put them away for a few months and come back to them later. I have some spinning to share with you guys today. Um, and I also got back to natural dyeing because Tis the season for dandelions. I'm sure many of you have been dealing with dandelions. So I've been doing a little bit of natural dyeing and it's been really good for my mental health to get back into that again and everything. So um, pretty big podcast episode today. Like I didn't think it was going to be a long one because I haven't really done a lot of knitting. But for those of you who have been with me for 
you know, the two plus years that I have been doing this, you know that whenever I say it's not going to be a long episode, it's still always a pretty long episode. So yeah, I've got knitting, I've got spinning, I've got natural dyeing, and I've got a cute bunny to show you guys. Hi, are you going to come back? Are you going to come back over here? Come here, Felix. Hi, come here. Hi there, come here. So this is Felix. Guys, I got an English Angora bunny. And I love him so much. His ears should be up. <laughs> His ears are flopped, which means he's really not a show bunny. But he is so sweet and he is the perfect pet. And he he's the sweetest. He is um, he's ten and a half weeks old. So I got in touch with a breeder who lives in Westchester, and I did this around Easter time, not because I wanted a bunny for Easter. There are so many, you know, horror stories about people getting bunnies for Easter. You guys know me. That's not me. My cat was almost seventeen, so you know. I wasn't just bringing a bunny into the family just to do so because it was Easter. I, you know, that's ridiculous. But, um, you know, several years ago when I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool for the first time in 2018, you know, we saw the English Angora bunnies. I had um, Tabitha from Long Island Yarn and Farm has two English Angora bunnies. I think they're English Angora. At least she used to have English Angora. She's got some Angora bunnies. There are, there are different um, varieties. There's English, there's French, there's Satin, there's German, there's Giant, there's, there's so many. Um, so during my grieving process, um, you know, everyone asks, are you going to get another cat? Are you going to get a kitten? And Sam was just such a special cat that that wasn't something that I could do right away. I just wasn't, oh, <laughs> I wasn't ready for a kitten. Hey, buddy, I'm going to go hop away again or are you going to stay? He's a baby, so he is really, really wiggly so far. Um, but he, he's sweet and yeah, hey, you are so wiggly and I'm going to get scratched. So I'm going to say goodbye while I talk. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I mean, I just got scratched. <laughs> so anyway, I did, um, I spent weeks and weeks and weeks doing, doing research and learning about, you know, what it's like to have a bunny and raise a bunny. And, um, yeah, I just learned about them. And the more I learned about them, they're, you know, they're kind of similar in some ways to cats and they're kind of similar in some ways to dogs, but they're not really like either. Um, I learned that you can litter box train them and that they can be free roam. So Felix is a free roam bunny. He has his own like bedroom play space where he stays when I'm not home and when we're sleeping at night. But um, aside from that, we've been apartment proofing, bunny proofing our apartment and he just kind of runs around and explores and so far, he's only eaten one iPhone charger, and that is it. Um, yeah, so welcome to the Stop, Drop, and Knit podcast for Felix. I think he's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, he's an Angora bunny, so as I was saying at the, you know, when I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool, I got interested in the idea of someday maybe having an Angora bunny because I do like to spin. I think at that time I wasn't yet a spinner. I was very, very new to my spinning journey. But you guys know that I've been keeping up with my spinning and, oh, you're gonna hang out right there. How cute. Um, and yeah, I think he, I wanted to show him on the podcast because I need to give him a haircut in the coming weeks because, you know, finally it's getting warmer and Angora wool is much, much warmer than sheep wool. So he's going to be due for his first haircut soon. And yeah, I've been trying to get him used to grooming a bit and he's wiggly. <laughs> this is going to be an adventure, but an adorable adventure and I'm really really just thrilled I've had him for 
just about three weeks. So we're, you know, getting used to one another here and we're adjusting to life with a bunny and yeah, things have just taken on a new level of excitement in, <laughs> um, in our apartment here. Okay, so that was a pretty long introduction. Um, so I think that we should just get into all the podcasty podcast stuff because as I said, I've got a lot to show you guys and as always, I took my time getting everything ready so I only have about an hour to record before Owen gets home from school. So let's see how much we can squeeze into this hour. Okay, so let's start with what am I wearing today? So the weather has finally, finally turned spring-like, and so I decided to take out one of my very f most favorite knit tees today. And so I am wearing the Bright Axis tee, and this is a pattern by Stephanie Lotvin. Her Instagram is Tallybean Knits, and she wrote a book. Oh, what is the book? It is, do I have it? I know I have it right here. It's just a matter of where. It is. I think it's one of these. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So she is the author of this book here, Knit Happy with Self Striping Yarn. And the Bright Axis Tea is the one pattern that I have knit from this book so far. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, just a, a quick recap. Uh, this top section here is the last section that you knit actually, but this is obviously where you're using your self-striping yarn. Uh, the self-striping yarn that I used was, I think the colorway was called Autumn Blossom or, no, Autumn Squash Blossom, I don't know. I don't remember. It, it's in my project pages. But it was by Knitterly Things, of course. And this bottom portion here, so you cast on at the ribbing, you can see I've had it in my drawer, I've got a nice crease over here. But um, you just cast on and you knit bottom up in the rounds and then you basically knit the front panel and the back panel. You knit those guys separately and then you seam, I think it was with like a three needle bind off or something. And there is a cute little, uh, little neck detail over here. Mine's just been folded up. I should give it a little bit of a steam, but yeah. So I just thought it would be really fun to pull this out and wear this today. And yeah, so the Bright Axis Tea by Stephanie Lotvin. I think I knit this about two seasons ago. I think I knit it back in about 2021. Not positive, but I feel like this is the, the second or third season that I'm wearing this tea. So yeah, so that is what I am wearing today. I have one only one, can you believe it, finished object to share with you guys today. So let's move on into finished objects. Okay, so this is a little bit of a bunny central uh, episode today because my one and only finished object is the good bunny, which is a little little pattern by Susan B. Anderson. So this is the only bunny without a tail. Couldn't believe there's no tail on this guy. But um, all right, so I knit a few things and I dropped them because, you know, stop, drop, and knit podcast, as always. <laughs> so um, let me take off the sweater. We're going to do a little bit of undressing here. Actually, we're just gonna pull this guy down. Owen was playing with it. So I knit, um, I knit, there we go, that's better. Now you can see the little, the little knickers underneath. Um, I knit this bunny for Owen for Easter and he had just finished reading a book uh, by Kate de, de Milo, de, yeah. De Camillo, Kate De Camillo, and it was called Edward Tulane, which is about a porcelain bunny. And um, so it was just kind of coincided with, with this guy. He doesn't really have a name, but 
and he's got these floppy ears. He's really cute, and he's got um, he's got some pants, and he's got this like I don't know if you call it a skirt. It's basically like just something kind of like a little skirt to put over under over the pants and under the little dress. So that's everything that I have made for the bunny so far. The bunny, I will have to um, inc insert some pictures because there's also a little hat and a little shawl that you can knit for the bunny. But I didn't have time to do those. And because we're not in winter anymore, I decided to hold off on knitting those until it gets cooler because bunny right now does not need a hat and a shawl. So um, I have about this much left over from the bunny color. I just, this was a kit from Barrett Wilco from Susan B. Anderson. I love her kits. I actually got two of these bunny kits because I couldn't decide which colorways I wanted and Owen convinced me to just order both because, you know, kids, they do that. Um, but yeah, so I think that the shawl has a lot of this color and the purple and yeah, so these are just all the colors of wool that came with the kit and yeah, so I will sometime you know in the fall or something i will finish knitting the little accessories for this guy and yeah that is my only finished object and i finished this for easter and i think easter was april 9th it was kind of early this year so yeah that this was the only thing i was working on for like those whole couple of weeks since sam died on march 30th and then yeah this this was what i was what i was knitting on pretty much only. So yeah, I finished him in time for Easter or her, they, I finished them. I finished them for Easter. Yeah, the nameless bunny. And that is my one and only finished object. So let's move on into the whips that I have been working on a little bit here and there. Okay, so last time I podcast, I had showed you guys that I had cast on the Hush sweater. This is a pattern by Tin Can Knits, and I am knitting this from some very old stash yarn. Um, I am knitting this from some Cascade Yarns Eco Duo, which is all natural colors alpaca. It's undyed baby alpaca 70% and 30% undyed merino wool. I just want to say I opened the windows so if you hear a bit of outside road noise we live kind of on a busy road. Um, it was just too warm in here though and it's it's not quite warm enough for the air conditioner but to have it closed up in here was just, <laughs> was just a little bit too much so I apologize if the noise at any point you know is distracting. But, so I have had this yarn in my stash since 2012, so for a good decade already, and I never knew what to make from it. And then I saw, um, you know, I went to Ravelry and I was searching actually for the yarn and projects that people made from it, and most of the sweaters and accessories and stuff were patterns from, you know, a decade ago and didn't really appeal to me. But I saw somebody use the same yarn, different colorway, for the Hush sweater, which is a brand new pattern this past fall from Tin Can Knits. And so I have, it does this self-striping thing. And so I finished knitting the body. I haven't actually tried it on yet, but um, I mean, we can we could do that, but I think for the sake of time today, I'm not going to try it on, um, but I, you know, it's kind of at hip length over here. I was careful not to knit it too long because I know that at the high alpaca content, this can be a very, very drapey yarn and it, you know, it can get heavy and it can stretch. And so I just wanted to allow for, 
for that to happen. So I didn't want to go too long, but I also didn't want to go too short because you guys all know I've had some bad experiences with not knitting some sweaters long enough. So, but it's got this really beautiful, simple cable pattern up at the top. And I just think it's, it's really, really lovely. I finished the body, but I have no desire to cast on the sleeves right now. It is warm outside. It's actually, we're having a very warm day here on Long Island. It's going to be, it's, it's like 81 degrees today. So not terrible, but you know, we're, we're finally getting into the spring weather and this is a very warm fiber. And you know, there's just, this, this can wait. This can wait until early fall. I will throw a couple of sleeves on it in early fall and we'll get this ready for late fall, winter time when I will be more excited to finish it and have it in my wardrobe. So that is my first whip. So I think I, I had pretty much just separated for the sleeves, I think last time. And so I did go ahead and finish the body. So this just needs some sleeves and it will be a pretty good place to pick up and finish for the fall. Next, I'm going to grab the project that I am going to start focusing my attention on now. Hang on. Okay, so in this project back here, this is a Ho Hohi Locatelli bag that I won in a raffle at Tabitha from Long Island Yarn and Farm. Her, she had a raffle at her, um, Okay, it's, it's that time of year. Motorcycles and dirt bikes and stuff come out. Um, anyway, I got the, the bag in a raffle at Tabitha's open house before Christmas, not this past one, but a year ago, I won that. So, in here is my spring issue of the Pom Pom Magazine from last year. And I have been knitting Effervescent, which is the pattern on the cover, by Amy Schur. And so, I started this last April. My plan was to finish it this April, but my knitting mojo was non-existent. But I did finally pick this up again this past week, and I am almost... I'm almost at the nine inches that she says to knit before starting the yoke pattern. I'm probably gonna knit this to 10 inches, maybe even 11. I think what I'll do is I'm gonna measure this T that I have on right now and make it about the same as this because I'm not really sure that nine inches is going to be something that I'm gonna be happy with in the end. But I also don't want to overdo it because when I've seen people's versions that they have knit like several inches longer on it, I think that that to me detracts from the like the shape that she had in mind for this garment. So I'm going to try to find a happy balance with the body length, um, which it's a little hard doing this bottom up because <laughs> I'm really finding it hard to know exactly exactly when to stop. So I think I will measure this and try to get kind of similar to that before I um, do the yoke. But I think that the way that you do this is after you get the body part knit, I think you then knit the sleeves and then I think you connect those all together before doing the yoke. Because if you think about it, you have, let me see if I can find, um, I mean, this will work. The yoke pattern, you know, it continues, that lacy pattern continues onto the sleeves. So I think what happens is that the sleeve split happens right after that yoke lace pattern finishes, but because we're knitting this bottom up, we have to actually knit the sleeves bottom up as well so that when we connect it, we're, we're doing that lace yoke from bottom up as well. 
because it also is happening on the sleeve. So there's no way to like pick up the sleeves and knit that part of the yoke. Sorry. Um, it, it just all has to be knit the same direction because it's lace and I mean everything needs to be knit the same direction pretty much. So it's interesting. I've never done it this way before for a sweater that has a yoke design. So I am excited to finish the body. I was really excited to start the yoke but then I realized I have to actually knit the sleeves first. So I might try to do the sleeves two at a time. But I'm not sure because I did not like knitting socks two at a time. So, but it might be the best way to go so that everything is like equal lengths and everything. So that's where I am with the effervescent tee. Um, I'm knitting this in the Wandering Flock singles in the Cosmic Tie-Dye colorway. So this is gonna be a really fun spring top. I don't think I'm really gonna get it finished um, in time to wear it before the weather gets a little bit too warm. There's like three quarter length sleeves on this, so not exactly short sleeves. Um, but I think it's a really, really fun, bright, they're like pastel neons, so not super bright, but not super pastel. I think it's just a really happy colorway, and I am in the mood to knit some happy things right now. So yeah, so I did pick that up and put like another half inch on this or something. And so I'm putting the Hush sweater away. I am picking this one up and this is going to be the sweater that I'm working on for the time being. Next up, I'm trying to move through these pretty quickly, which is actually pretty easy to do since I haven't like done a whole lot of work on any one project so far, but Next up is my Twists and Turns shawl. Yes, I'm still knitting this thing, guys. I'm still knitting it. Oh my goodness. Okay, last time I talked to you guys, I was still in clue three. So, oh, we're tangled because I just pulled it out of my bag. All right, clue three was these really annoying strips. I... You know, these didn't take that long to knit. They're curling, so it's really hard to show you every time I do this. But you can see that there's one by one cable twisted stitch pattern that happens on the strips. So it won't curl for forever. Once we knit clue four, that'll be all sorted out. But basically it's like a snake of twisted stitches. And last time I had finished the first one and had just done a little bit on the second one. And my plan was to finish that up and then, and then Sam. And then I just, I couldn't knit. And these strips I had to really focus on because I was doing the one and one twisted stitches, the one, one by one cable without a cable needle because, oh my gosh, too much cable needle to deal with that. So. So doing the cables without a cable needle was like a new technique for me and I'm good at it now, but I really needed to concentrate and, oh, hi, are you trying to eat my knitting? Yeah, hi. All right, so anyway, so now <laughs> I have finished clue three with the exception of I did not knit those I-cord cables that are supposed to be um, twisted in between. It's an optional add-on for this section of Clue 2. I just didn't feel like doing that right now. It doesn't mean that I won't do those and have that as part of the finished shawl. Just didn't feel like sitting and knitting a whole bunch of I-cord snakes at the moment. I really wanted to get on to clue four because this section is like my happy knitting place. So I haven't gotten that much done. I just, I started this the other day, but I have, so this is clue four. You pick up from after these purple and brown stripes, you pick up and you alternate between a, the light color is a stockinette stripe and the darker color, the main color is a um, garter stitch stripe. 
And what you do is we're filling in this whole section all the way to the end of here. And you pick it up. One, you know, every you get to the row, you pick it up, you go back and all the way and the rows get a little bit shorter. So this is like really like my happy knitting place knitting. I think, you know, there's there's been different levels of enjoyment with this shawl. There have been, like the first section was very tedious and I did not enjoy knitting the first section, which was this part. He has since released an entire shawl that looks like this, which is beautiful, but I don't know. It was really tedious. I don't know that I could do it. There was so much casting on and binding off involved because of these braided sections that I don't know. I don't think I have it in me to go through all of that for an entire shawl. Hey buddy, you're playing with my yarn. Hi, you wanna say hi again? Nope, you're gonna run away. <laughs> okay, um, so anyway, this, this is gonna be just my, I'm gonna start knitting on this a little bit every day. I think it's actually gonna go pretty quickly because the rows get shorter as you get towards the end of, of the section. But then of course you've gotta do it on the other side too. But I think that that's gonna be an enjoyable, calm knitting experience that I can really, really use right now. So we are still working on the twist and turn shawl and you know I still have quite a long ways to go. But we'll get there hopefully before the fall. We will hopefully I'll finish this before his next mystery knit along. So that's kind of the plan at this point is to just get it done before the next one starts. So because they are fun to do. This one just had some some tedious sections. The overall shawl is fine. I'm not one that hates the overall look of the shawl like some people do. I'm fine with the shawl. I think when it's wrapped around, it looks really cool. And yeah, but definitely there were some very tedious sections of this that just made me not want to pick it up and work on it. But thankfully, we're back to an enjoyable part and hopefully a lot of progress will be made. And I am knitting this with Wonderland yarns that they provided for me for this shawl. And yeah, I've talked about it previous, previously, and if you guys want to know the colors, um, yeah, I have it linked in my, in my Ravelry projects. All of that information you can check um, in the description box below will give you the link to my Ravelry project page and all of that is listed here. But it's Wonderland Yarns and I think it's beautiful and one day it's gonna get done. All right, so I just have one more whip to share with you. And that whip is my Literally Things sock. So I finally cast on the other one, actually the morning that we went to pick up Felix, I needed some car knitting because Westchester, where she lives, is about two hour drive from where we are. So I just, I needed a very simple, simple project to work on. This is just, my standard go-to pattern is my Knitted Heart Vanilla Socks pattern, which just has a little bit of ribbing that continues down the sides of the socks. So um, the, the complete sock will, will look like this first one. So I've had the first one done for quite some time, just need to get the second one done. Not gonna wear these anytime soon. We are out of sock season now, but um, I mean, you guys have seen this a lot. I am, I have knit Owen a pair of socks from this yarn, which was from September 2020, Knitterly Things um, Self Striping Club. And this colorway is called That Fall Feeling. And it is 100% superwash merino. So I grabbed a mini for, I'll just show you what it looks like up in a heel and toe. Um, I don't have too much of it left, but for the heel, I'm using a mini that does have nylon in it. I grabbed it from, um, did it come with this pair of socks? It might have, actually. Not sure, but I, I'm pretty sure that the mini actually has nylon in it. But I don't tend to wear holes in my socks, probably because I just, I have so many that I rotate through them. 
quite frequently. But yeah, so that's just been my kind of not really that excited to knit on it right now because it's not sock season, but I just want to get it done. I have another sock in a spring colorway that I didn't bring up to show you today, but again, that's like a single sock that I just need to knit the second one. So I'm going to kind of focus on just getting the second socks done for those so that I have two more pairs of socks um, that match <laughs> instead of two single socks that don't match. So yeah, so that is all my whips and we are going to go into spinning. Okay, so for spinning, first of all, Owen, in his theater program right now, he is one of the leading roles in Susical the Musical Junior. He is playing the part of Jojo, who is basically the smallest little who, and if you guys know the, the book Horton Hears a Who, basically he is the who who yells the loudest and gets all of the animals in Horton's world to hear that there's really, really, really um, a community of who's that live on this tiny little dust speck um, world that he placed on this clover. Anyway, so Horton Hears a Who, um, last year, one of the Paradise Fiber, Fiber Club was a Dr. Seuss themed fiber. So the bag, they had a few different bags. The one that I got happened to be Horton Hears a Who. And so I thought that I would actually start spinning this fiber because I do a lot of spinning at the Historical Society down the road from Owen's theater rehearsals while he is in rehearsal. So the weather is finally, finally warm enough now. So we got something like 10 ounces of this really bright neon fiber. So I, I mean, I still have so much to work through here. It is 100% merino. And I have spun up two singles, which is a little hard to show you now because I'm in the middle of plying them together. Um, so we've got this single here, and I always have a hard time showing, but basically you, you can't see any of this. Um, let's see if I can like wrap. So. If you look on my on my hand here that's just like one of the sections of colors but there's all these beautiful neon colors it morphs um, so these these are my singles and I'm having a hard time focusing it right now but just really bright and happy and so I started I'm gonna just drop these here I started um, combining these into applied yarn so this is just a two ply and i don't think that it's too muddy but i also don't think that i want to do the whole thing in a two ply yarn um so let me just see if i can kind of wrap this on my hand a little bit and get that to focus so you know it's the colors are not muddying up at all it's still really really bright and happy but as I was plying them, I really was looking at the singles. Let me actually wrap some of the... I'm going to wrap a little bit of this around my hand um, so that we can maybe see what it looks like, you know, separately a bit. So here's, here's just some of it here. So you can see the two separate strands. And I just, I really like how they look as singles. I have so much of this, of this fiber though, that I think what I'm gonna do is finish making this a two ply yarn. We'll just see how much yardage I have. I might, I might do a little more as a two ply just to make sure that I have enough to make, I don't know, like a bulky hat or something like that. Um, and then I might just, make the rest of them single ply and leave them as single ply. However, when I do it this time, I want to make sure that I am being more consistent with 
the weight of yarn that I'm spinning. Because right now, like, I wasn't very consistent. I basically, I had some pretty thick parts, some pretty thin parts, and my initial thought was, you know, to create a two-ply yarn, so I wasn't too concerned about it being super, super consistent. But if I am going to leave it as a singles, then I want to use that as um, motivation to work on my consistency a little bit more, like, with more attention to that. Because sometimes I do like really make a very consistent yarn, but that just wasn't what my focus was for this particular, for this particular yarn. But I think it's still going to be really fun. I think it'll make a really fun, super colorful hat um, with a really bright like pom pom on it or something would be pretty cool. So that is basically what I have been spinning um, for this past month and a half. I've just been working on it. Like I mean, I had two singles completed and now I'm just plying those together because I wanted to see what it was going to look like. Um, and I haven't really been spinning much else. I did, however, want to share a little bit about, about Felix and his grooming and how that is going so far. So let me go grab that. Okay, so I have my little grooming basket here which has some bunnies in on the little lining of the fabric um, and so I just wanted to show you the tools that I have and what I got is what Renee from Tailspin Farm I've been watching her channel a lot recently she has a whole bunch of Angoras some English some French basically the difference is that the English Angoras which is what Felix is is they have all of the fur also on their face and they're the smallest of the Angora breeds. And the French Angoras are similar. I think they might be a little bit bigger in size, but they have bare faces. I mean, not bare, they have fur on their face, but not, not the wool that we use. Um, he hears me talking about him and he just came over here again. So I have, this is like a, a poodle comb and it's got um, like, I have a, my background is pretty busy, so it's probably a little hard. To see I can hold it in front of my shirt here but you can see it's got like two different lengths of comb and so hopefully when his his coat will start he does go through molting seasons um, so he will start molting I think he goes through four of these every year so about every three months I need to give him a very thorough grooming which I'm hoping to be able to do a combination of combing to get the fiber, like the fiber that he naturally will loosen as his second coat grows in, will just start to pull out. And it's like when any other animal sheds and they go through that shedding season, like if you have a dog and all of a sudden there's like fur everywhere, there, there is some fiber that just will automatically just loosen from their body and so the comb will should be able to get that out very easily right now um, and then I'm going to actually have to give him a little haircut and I'm gonna use Renee uses these like shearing what are these called um, seam ripper this is actually a seam ripper but she likes to use this because you have to be very, rabbits have very, very thin skin. So you have to be very careful that you don't ac accidentally nip their bodies. And so this, you can use these to get their matted wool to, to help kind of reduce the clumps in that. So you can cut the mats apart and then comb them out. Um, but I can also use this to just cut the fur pretty close to his body and give him like a little puppy cut. You can also use like clippers and like shear them, but I don't want to do that uh, because from what I've read so far, it's not going to be the best for the wool if you want to use it for spinning. So basically I'm gonna try my hand at combing him and then, and then clipping his fur off to collect for spinning. So what I have right now is not spinning 
quality wool. Um, he likes to play in his hay a lot. They like to kind of be right in their hay when they eat and everything. And naturally, since he has wool, the fur, uh, the hay gets all stuck in his wool and it starts to clump together. So I have just collected here, you know, this is, it's a good amount of fiber, but it's, it's not like in those long, you want, you want maybe like a three to four inch length for spinning. You know, and this isn't really that. This is like just those like shorter, shorter pieces from getting tangled up in themselves. So, um, what I can do, I can do a few things. I can, probably what I'll do is, is I need to get those, um, fiber combs from like Paradise Fibers or some like, just like some small little groom, grooming brushes that you can get for like dogs, like those things that have like the wire teeth, which is just like a much smaller version. And I can try to comb it out as best as I can, but I could use this either for wool felting, would be a good use for this, or I can use this for like stuffing for like one of my stuffed animals. Now itchy, oh goodness. I just got a fiber like up my nose a little bit. So, um, so I'm saving all of this too, even though, you know, I don't think this is going to be, it's super soft and you can see like there's a little hay right here, which I can, I can just pick that out. Um, but really there's like, there's like these little matted bits. Like you can just see this is like a mat where his fiber got all like twisted and tangled up together. And yeah, so this, what I've got so far, I'm not thinking that I'm going to really be able to spin with this. Probably when I give him his first like serious grooming session is going to be the actual fiber. Hopefully I'll be able to get a good amount of his fluff to use for spinning. So yeah, I think, I think that'll be, that'll be special to, to actually have some fiber from an Angora bunny. I've never spun with Angora. I have some Angora that I have purchased, but I've not spun with it yet. So I think that'll be really special though, to have some Angora from my actual English Angora bunny. So I'll be able to spin Felix and I just think that'll be really fun. Okay, so I wanna move on to natural dyeing next. So it has been a while, several months since I have done any natural dyeing, but it is dandelion season again, which started a good month ago. Even, even almost six weeks ago, we started seeing maybe the first dandelions here in New York. And so I, well, I've got two different things here. This is not all dandelions, but I'm gonna take those guys out for a minute. So I did a lot of dandelion foraging from the yard. Oh my gosh, the yard at the place where I'm renting basically is, I think, 88% dandelions. <laughs> it's just, there's more dandelions than actual lawn. So there is no shortage <laughs> here and my landlord, is like I asked him if I could dig up the roots too because I've always wanted to try dyeing with the dandelion roots as well and he was like yeah sure go for it <laughs> like there's yeah basically I have free reign to just dig up whatever and it looks like I haven't even touched anything like there's, there's so much here so anyway so this is what So this is what I have dyed with the dandelion flowers this season. I think last year I didn't dye with dandelions, but pretty much every other year I did. And so I am dyeing this on a different base. This is 50% recycled wool and 50% tensile, which is like a plant-based fiber. So I wasn't sure how the plant-based fiber part was going to take the dandelions, but I did 
use an alum mordant first on the yarn because dandelions don't have any tannins in them. So I did need to have a, a binder for the color to stick to. So yeah, I think it's a really soft, pale yellow and it's not the brightest that I've gotten from dandelions, but it's a really like solid color. So this was two separate dye baths and yeah, I think it's, it's just really, really pretty. So that's what I have finished so far with the dandelion flowers and I did a whole bunch of weeding and I collected a ton of dandelion root. Now, from the little bit of reading that I have done, there is rumor from long ago that the Scots used dandelion root on their tartans to get the magenta color. Nobody in any of the research that I has, have done, it's like in books that it's possible to do, but nobody actually knows how to do it. So I don't know if this is a myth. Most people say they just get brown or whatever. You can, you can use it and then you can modify it with iron and get a pretty deep green, I think. Um, if all else fails, just, just modify it with an iron after bath and you get like a nice, a nice deeper color. Um, but I don't know, like you guys know when I dye with the lichen and I do an ammonia soak for like four months. I'm wondering if it might be something similar to that. So I've collected a whole bunch and I think what I'll do is I'll put some of them in a jar and ferment an ammonia and just kind of experiment and see what happens because I don't know, some people think that in Scotland maybe there's a different variety of dandelion that produces that magenta color from the roots that we don't have here in other parts of the world. I don't know. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting because magenta is an amazing color. It's my favorite color. So hi Felix. <laughs> he just poked himself out from a basket. It's very cute. Um, hi. <laughs> You're so cute. His little nose is going and going and he's adorable. Highly recommend a bunny if you have the patience to um, yeah, they're a lot of work, <laughs> but I highly recommend. They're, they're super fun. High maintenance animal, but very well worth it. Anyway, if there is any like possible way that magenta can be obtained from dandelion roots, I'm here for it. I am here to experiment with pH and ammonia and maybe they use their own urine back to get it. I don't know. I don't know that I want to go that far in my experiments, but why not? I just think it, when you heat it up on the stove, it really smells kind of rank from what I hear. I haven't tried it, but you know, maybe one day we will try fermenting in, in, in urine. I hear that um, urine from prepubescent boys is the best, and I, I have one of those in my, in my home at the moment, so Maybe we'll go there one day. <laughs> so, wow, that was a tangent. Anyway, so I also had, um, I also had a huge bag of mulberry leaves in my freezer from before I moved into this place. My parents had a mulberry tree and I had successfully died with those leaves many times. Um, this is not the brightest yellow that I've gotten from the mulberry. I've got two more skeins that are outside drying right now, but it's, again, it's a very solid yellow and this does give a very nice green when dipped in an iron after bath. So I might, you know, do half the skein and get like yellow green, um, or maybe not. This is also my recycled wool tensile 50-50 blend yarn. So that is all of the natural dyeing that I have done so far. I've got a whole bunch of avocado pits in the freezer ready to dye with, so there will be much more to share in the future. And I just have one very short acquisition section left to film. So let's dig into acquisitions. Okay. 
acquisitions. I did not purchase anything. Well, that's not true. My big acquisition was Felix. His full name is Felix Fuzzbottom. And he was, you know, he wasn't that expensive, but all of the gear I needed for him was pretty expensive <laughs> altogether. So he was my big acquisition for the past six weeks. But my parents went on another cruise around Europe and um, they didn't get that much yarn shopping done. They went to Canada somewhere. They didn't get to port everywhere that I think they were supposed to be able to port in St. John's, but I think this might've come from Nova Scotia. My dad picked this color out. And so this is really, really beautiful. Um, they also had limited space in their luggage, so they just picked up a couple things. So this is, the colorway is actually called Hibiscus. It is by Handmaiden Fine Yarn. Um, I've never, you know, I'm not familiar with that brand, but that is, that is the tag, if any of you are familiar with that. But it is 70% Superwash Merino and 30% Baby Alpaca. Owen has already asked for something for him in this. But I don't know. My husband's like, no, you should make yourself like a, a nice little shawl or a cowl or something out of this. Um, so, yeah, I haven't, I haven't taken this out yet. But you guys know I love a good rainbow. And so this is really beautiful. It's got like some brown... We kind of have a little bit of every of every color here so yeah i think it's it's just really really beautiful so i was very pleased with that and then my parents um got just another few hours in iceland and so um i don't remember the name of the of the shop but basically it's the it's it's the big one that everybody that everybody goes to um yeah i i don't remember they didn't remember but my mom just asked for um like sock yarn and so she got me two skeins each of which is 100 grams of this which i've never heard of before last time she got me some let lopi to use for mittens and stuff and this time this is Lopi as well, but it's Hasuband, Hasuband, I don't know, but it is, basically it is wool and it has 20% nylon in it for added strength. And it is black, it does not look like a natural black to me, so I'm pretty sure that this must have been dyed, but yeah, you know, for some reason she decided black. I'm always saying I should knit myself some black socks, and I always pick out more fun colors than black. So. I've got 200 grams here. I could probably make a pair for me and a pair for my husband. At least mostly black for him. So, yeah. That is everything today. So, all right. I, I squeezed it all in before I have to leave and pick up Owen pretty soon. Little Felix is squished himself in between some baskets underneath the, co the coffee table. He is, yeah, he has squished himself in between a couple of baskets underneath the coffee table and is looking very adorable. So yeah, my dad said he looks like basically you just put a stick on him and use him to mop the floor because he just kind of looks like a mop. It's the most adorable mop I've ever seen though. Yeah, for some reason, um, when I picked him up, his ears, his ears were still up like they're supposed to be, but then within the first couple of days of him being here, one ear fell and then the other ear fell and the breeder is like oh my gosh if you want to like exchange him or, or something I was like are you kidding me I would never return Felix I love Felix he's he's super cute if I were to use him as a show bunny which I was never going to do then that actually is a disqualifier um yeah the to show that Angora has to have their ears up. It's possible that because he's still a baby, I think their ears, which they can be pretty heavy, his ears might just be growing a little bit faster than his body, and he might just have to grow into them a little bit. I've heard that sometimes they'll go back up. 
He doesn't appear to have any kind of infection or, you know, anything wrong with him physically. And I can't think of anything that was an injury for him or anything like that. He's, you know, he's not had any accidents since being here. So I'm not really sure what's going on with his ears, but it does make him look like more of a little puppy or something than a bunny. Um, every once in a while he'll put them back up, but only for a few seconds here and there. So we'll see if they pop back up at some time. I love him. He's a sweetie. He's adorable. And yeah, we're getting to know each other still. So you'll be seeing lots more Felix on this channel. It was really good to sit down. I just had to be in the mood to podcast again. And yeah, I thought about it the last couple of weeks and I just, I wasn't knitting or doing much with anything yet again and I just I just wasn't I wasn't feeling it and so I didn't do it but we're getting back into the swing of things the, the change in season is really nice and you know it's finally like you can hang out outside again weather which I like to do a lot of my spinning outside so I'm sure there'll be lots of spinning happening and natural dyeing again we are in the season for it so yeah i think i think it's uh, it's back it feels good blah, blah, blah. i'm back it's back i'm back it feels good to be back so thank you for your patience and thank you everybody who you know sent their condolences about samson my way and yeah i guess that's, that's just all that i have to share with you guys today I wish you all a great Mother's Day weekend and take care. I will see you hopefully before another six weeks have gone by. Bye-bye everybody.